In this video, we will learn how to factor out the greatest common factor of the coefficients of a polynomial. Whenever you go to factor a polynomial, the first thing you should look for is to factor out a common monomial if at all possible. When you look to factor out a common monomial, you should begin by looking at the coefficients. In this case, our coefficients are 10, 25, and 50. What we want to do is find the greatest common factor of 10, 25, and 50 in order to factor that number out. In this case, the greatest common factor of each of these numbers is 5. So we're going to take the greatest common factor of the coefficients and put it in front in order to factor it out. When we factor, we don't want to change the value of the polynomial at all. We want the polynomial to keep the same value, but just look different. Since there are three terms in this original polynomial, we need to make it so that the new polynomial will also have three terms. We can accomplish that by multiplying this 5 by a polynomial that will have three terms. You can think of, the, of factoring as the reverse of the distributive property in a way. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this polynomial and figuring out how could we have distributed a 5 to some polynomial that's going to go inside these parentheses in order to get the original polynomial that we started with. In other words, we're going to have to take this 5 and distribute it to three different terms. One term there, one term here, and one term here in order to get the original polynomial again. The question becomes, for the term that needs to go here, what do I need to multiply 5 by in order to get 10a? What do I multiply 5 by to get 10? The answer there is 2. And in order to get an a there, I still have to multiply by an a. Think about this. If you multiply 5 by 2a, you will get 10a. You just have to answer that same question for the last two terms here. What do I multiply 5 by to get 25b? First look at the coefficients. What do I have to multiply 5 by to get 25? Now this is the exact same question as what's 25 divided by 5? The correct answer there would be 5. When you multiply 5 by 5, you'll get 25, but you also need to multiply in a b. And of course, these two need to be added together in order to apply the distributive property correctly. We have one final term to take care of. The question we ask here is, what do we multiply 5 by in order to get 50c? In order to get 50, we have to multiply 5 by 10. And in order to get that factor of c, we need the c to be multiplied in there as well. This means that we can factor out a common monomial factor from this trinomial of 5. Remember, when you factor, you're reversing the distributive property and you're not changing the value. So let's ensure that we didn't change the value. As you should do after you factored any polynomial, it's always a good idea to expand that polynomial again to make sure that you get the original value. So let's do that. Let's take 5 times 2a, and 5 times 2a is 10a. And we're going to add to that. 5 times 5b. Five, 5 times 5b five is 25b. And we're going to add to that 5 times 10c. 5 times 10c is 50c. If we did everything correctly, the value or the expression that we get after we've redistributed here should be the same thing we started with. Indeed, it's 10a plus 25b 
plus 50c, exactly what we started with. So this was factored correctly. Let's try another one. Let's consider 6x plus 9y. In this case, we're dealing with just a binomial, but the concept is the same. We want to look for the greatest common factor of those coefficients in order to factor it out. In this case, the greatest common factor of 6 and 9 is 3. Again, I don't want to change the value. I want to undo the distributive property, essentially, without changing the value of the polynomial. Since this was a binomial when we started, meaning that it has two terms, it needs to have two terms when we are finished. So we need to have two terms inside the parentheses here that we'll distribute the 3 to. The question is the same. What do I multiply 3 by to get 6x? The answer to that question would be 2. 3 times 2 is 6, and we still need an x to be multiplied in there. To get the last term, what do we multiply 3 by to get 9y? And the answer to that question, 3 times 3 gives us 9, and we still need the y multiplied in there. Anytime you factor, you should always check to make sure that you get the same thing after you expand. So let's multiply. 3 times 2x, when we distribute here, would give us 6x. And 3 times 3y would give us 9y. Since we ended with the same polynomial that we started with, we know that we've done it correctly. Let's consider one final example. Let's consider 4f plus 8g. Just like always, we should begin by looking for a common monomial factor. And we start by looking at the coefficients, in this case 4 and 8. We want to find the greatest common factor of 4 and 8. In this case, that is 4. Remember, when we factor, we don't want to change the value of the polynomial. We want the new polynomial that we're trying to write to be the exact same thing as 4f plus 8g. To do that, we need to distribute the greatest common factor, which is 4, to some polynomial that'll give us 4f plus 8g. Since the original polynomial has two terms, the polynomial in here should also have two terms. We need to figure out what we need to multiply 4 by to get 4f in order to find this first term. 4 times 1 gives us 4, so the coefficient here is 1, but we don't ever have to write 1 as a coefficient. And then we need to have the f multiplied in there as well. Imagine what will happen when we distribute. We'll multiply 4 by f, which will give us exactly what we want. It'll give us 4f. Now we need to find the second term. What do we multiply 4 by to get 8g? 4 times 2 is 8, and we need to have the g multiplied in there as well. If one of your coefficients is the greatest common factor, that means that the coefficient of the factored polynomial will simply be 1. And we usually don't write 1 as a coefficient, so we just leave it as the variable or variables itself. Just like every time we factor, we should check to make sure that when we expand this, 4 times f and 4 times 2g, we'll get the same thing that we started with. So let's consider 4 times f is 4f, plus 4 times 2g is 8g. Since the expanded form is the same thing as the original, we know that we've done our work correctly.